We're going to be talking about the one question that I always get when a new client calls. When someone is calling us asking uh, for our help or our advice on learning how to prepare for uh, some type of critical moment or disaster that they see in the future. And the question that I always get is, shouldn't I have a plan for some type of situation that's on their mind? Um, these days, it's often an active shooter scenario or a, a food safety uh, product recall uh, workplace violence um, or executive misconduct. These seem to be very popular crisis situations that companies are preparing for today. And my answer to this always is that, that having plans is great. Um, you could, we should, companies should build plans for the risks that they anticipate um, could happen to their organizations, for the disruptions that they think could happen to their locations or their headquarters or their employees. And they should plan for those situations that can really cause harm to their assets, particularly their people um, around the world. Uh, but in, in my mind, from my experience, crisis management doesn't really start by building a set of plans. It starts with thinking about what I like to call a crisis management framework. And we use this a lot in our consulting practice that before you get to build plans, you should start by understanding how your organization at a strategic level is going to prepare for situations by building a decision-making and communication framework, a, a basically a decision-making process that you're gonna use when these situations happen. Because if you don't build something like this and instead you build a set of plans you're eventually going to find yourself in a situation where you're confronted with a business disruption uh, or a crisis or a risk that you never anticipated and for which you don't have a plan. And now all of a sudden, because you have never built a decision-making process, you've never built a crisis framework, you're not sure what to do. Uh, I, th I think a, a great example of this from, from recent history is the, the huge earthquake that the country of Japan faced uh, back in 2011. They saw one of the, I believe one of the five worst earthquakes that's ever happened in US, or in world history rather. It was combined with a massive tsunami that came ashore uh, not long after the earthquake. So now you have a country that's dealing with this massive earthquake and the damage that it brought you have a huge tsunami that comes ashore and kills thousands of people and creates a massive amount of damage to northern Japan. And then as we all know, within the next few days becomes the looming radiological disaster that happened at the Fukushima nuclear plant. And arguably going into this situation, anyone could say that Japan was perhaps the best prepared company in the world, the best prepared country in the world rather for an earthquake. They were perhaps the best prepared country in the world for a tsunami. Um, they were lauded for their nuclear safety and emergency procedures, but they found themselves confronted with all three at the same time. And their, their response, because they didn't have a good method on how they were going to deal with this, they didn't have a good situation awareness, their response caused a lot of criticism and certainly led to very difficult recovery period uh, and response for the company for the country as a whole what we want when we're planning for a crisis situation is to start with this idea of a crisis management framework and what you're building is a process by which your organization is going to make decisions on a strategic level to respond to a crisis to a business disruption and then how you'll recover from that disruption. So when we think about a crisis framework here at Bright Path, we start by understanding what our crisis strategy for an organization is going to be. And how do we connect that to the company's strategic objectives, the threats and vulnerabilities that are in front of them, and what, what allies and advocates might they have when they find themselves in this difficult situation. From there, we like to build a crisis playbook by establishing some sort of corporate crisis management team, uh, a defined escalation process by which 
um, situations are escalated um, from perhaps disparate incident processes throughout the organization into the corporate crisis management process where they are now being managed by this higher level group of cross-functional leaders on a corporate crisis management team. So here we're talking about funneling uh, at an enterprise level different types of incidents that are occurring that suddenly have become a crisis. And we advocate having a single corporate crisis management team uh, that deals with things once they reach that level. And here we're, we're really thinking about um, incorporating uh, incidents like information security incidents, uh, technology incidents or outages, um, physical security incidents, uh, financial situations, perhaps a liquidity crisis for an organization, and even things like a cyber breach or um, executive misconduct, all of which are now crisis situations that a company is dealing with. And we're pulling them into this corporate crisis management team once we've hit a set of escalation triggers. And we're letting this higher group, higher level group of leaders manage through this situation and then communicate out through their internal and external communication processes those decisions. So we're working through this decision-making framework. And once we've established that, then we can start to identify scenarios. We can build specific crisis plans, starting with the top 5, 10, 15 or so risks that the organization has identified. We can build crisis communications plans that line up with those risks and the crisis plans. Uh, we can build a rapid response process that allows for a quick response to a reputational situation and the communication aspects. And once we've built all of this and we've trained the corporate crisis management team and we have rolled this method out, then we can practice it by working through a full-blown crisis simulation and exercise and then reap the results, review the results of that exercise and build an after action plan to close the remaining gaps that we see. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.